Hello everyone, I am Antonio Nardella, Community Manager at the IOTA Foundation. In this tutorial, we are going to have a look at how to issue SSL certificates using Traffic. Traffic is the cloud native edge router software written in Go. We will use this procedure to expose the Hornet node over SSL secure sockets layer using certificates issued by Let's Encrypt. This will enable the use of Trinity with your Hornet node. Let's have a look at how this is done. As with our previous tutorials, we will go through the slides first and then we are going to um, operate directly on our VPS on our uh, server or machine. Disclaimer and warnings first. So this is an educational experience. We're trying to um, learn something here to see how this uh, configuration or setup is done and to understand uh, what we are uh, trying to achieve and how we are achieving that. The traffic configuration is minimal, is the bare minimum to uh, make it possible to connect your Trinity to uh, wallet to the uh, Hornet node. This setup is not for production systems and this setup does not cover the traffic or Hornet dashboard configuration through traffic. Um, please use previous tutorials to set up a Hornet node. We have uh, guides for Windows or GNU slash Linux and Mac OS systems. Uh, there will be links in the description below. Avoid mixing tutorials. So if you're using uh, Nuriel's uh, playbook, for example, or another guide, um, understand that um, they might use different technologies and different uh, configurations. So uh, please try not to mix stuff. Of course, as soon as you have understood the concept and if you know what technologies you're using, you can uh, have a look at different uh, tutorials to put the information together, but do not expect to uh, install the playbook and then follow this tutorial to have the same, um, the same setup. And you will most probably encounter uh, difficulties uh, if you're doing this. We're going also to uh, show how to install uh, the dig tool or software. And this is needed if you do not have a registered uh, domain. This means that you have two possibilities. Uh, the primary possibility is to register a domain like uh, mynode.org, for example, or node.domain.org. And uh, that is the advanced setup or the setup where you decide to have a node and you will keep that. For this tutorial, we are going to use this tool, uh, dig, to find out a static domain name of our VPS, of our server, and use that to register uh, the SSL certificate. Again, this is just for, um, for educational purpose and should not be used in production and should not be the definitive solution. And um, this tutorial can fail at the end if we are using a static domain name. So if, um, the, um, if the VPS provider or people uh, using this VPS provider use this methodology to register an SSL certificate, it is possible that at the end we will fail with issuing the certificate since uh, we are using Let's Encrypt and Let's Encrypt has a limit of 50 five zero certificates per week. So if there are 100 people setting up nodes and they're using exactly this same, uh, this same method and not only IOTA nodes, but uh, they are setting up their software in general, well, uh, it might fail in the end. So. Uh, be really careful that again we are trying to explain how things work how to um, use these technologies and uh, to give you a concept about it and then we suggest if you really want to use um, a node and to set it up to support the network or to use it as an access node for your wallet and for trinity 
to register a domain name to probably register a more powerful uh, VPS and then to use these concepts that you're learning here with your um, with your configuration to have a uh, Yota node to use uh, for your needs. What is on the agenda? We are going to introduce the IOTA Hornet node software really, really quickly. We're going to introduce uh, the traffic uh, router also really uh, briefly. Then there is mm, a brief introduction about how to install DIC for Windows 10 since uh, GNU slash Linux and Mac OS already have this software installed. Then we're going to see how to install traffic how to um, configure it and also how to configure uh, Trinity. Between the traffic and the Trinity configuration we will see what happens if uh, we are not getting our SSL certificate and um, to understand how to find out if we are going to if you are having this issue. Um, again we have installation nodes at this link here to copy paste the commands for example for the terminal and the link will also be pasted in the description below. So let's start with the uh, Hornet introduction. Hornet is um, a community driven IOTA node software. It has reached uh, as of today the 0.4 release and is now um, the software that we suggest to install as substitute to the old IRI or ERI node software, IOTA reference implementation software. So if you're watching this uh, tutorial, please install Hornet if you are looking for, um, for a IOTA node software for your use case. Um, really quick it's a community driven iota node it's pretty lightweight it's written in golang and uh, you can also install it for educational purposes or for testing on uh, small devices like a raspberry pi 3 and 4 and a rock 64 for example so it's going to be the iota network node as let's say as default and it's the base for Crystalis and it's going to um, be used for the next steps in the IOTA network. It also shares the Hive.go library with GoShimmer. So um, the lessons learned uh, by using the Hornet node will also be translated to the um, GoShimmer nodes that are the ones that we will use for the Cordicide Alphanet or the Cordicide network in future. Um, also here, if you want to dig deeper, I will link uh, the blog post and the tutorial to Hornet in the description below. So what is traffic? Well, traffic is an open source edge router, uh, also written in Golang, that makes uh, publishing uh, different services in this case the Hornet node but it can also be used uh, to publish other private uh, services like a web server or other software and um, is also here pretty lightweight and is also uh, natively compliant with major cluster technologies such as Kubernetes, Docker, Docker Swarm, Mesos and others. So um, it also works with, uh, let's say, bare metal installation. So how we have installed Hornet. If you have installed Hornet using Docker, um, there is also possibility to use traffic with that configuration that is not covered in this tutorial. So the beautiful part about it is that it's really that it's pretty easy to configure and it has also already the support to issue SSL certificates using uh, the Let's Encrypt service. So next up, we're going to have a look at how to install DIG in uh, Windows 10, and then uh, we continue with the tutorial. What is DIG? Short for Domain Information Grouper, 
um, is a command for the command line that helps you find out information about a DNS or domain name system. So if you have a domain name like your personal registered domain, uh, you can use dig to find out different information. For example, if you update um, your DNS record to point to your VPS, it might take up to 48 hours to update the DNS system, the worldwide DNS system, and with dig you can uh, look if um, the configuration has been upgraded, updated, and if, uh, for example, your registered domain is really pointing to VPS. I've linked the original source also in the presentation um, since I'm not reinventing the wheel and using uh, also other guides out there on the internet. So first things first, you will have to open your web browser and navigate to www.isc.org slash download slash and download the latest version of Bind. Again, we are just going through the slides really quickly. So here you will have to click on Bind 9 on the bottom, then this window will open and I suggest you, I suggest to download the uh, Bind 9 uh, dot 16 arm version like by clicking here on download and then you will have the possibility to download uh, this file so from here once you have downloaded it uh, with the right mouse button you click on run as administrator you will be asked uh, if you want to really run this software then during the installation phase make sure to flag here on the bottom the tools only flag then click on install to set up bind nine tools from here um, we are going to do something a little more advanced and we're going to add the uh, directory that contains the bind nine binary file to the windows path so in the file explorer we do a right click on this pc and on the bottom we select properties then we go to advanced system settings and uh, environment, environment variables and here we added the path variable under the system variables. So this is more or less how it looks like. Here maybe you have to scroll down if you do not find path uh, straight away. Then you click it, click on edit and here you can either browse to this folder or copy paste it from the original guide. So once you have done that, you click OK, OK, and close these windows. And from here, you can open the terminal, the Windows command or PowerShell, and try testing dig out by typing dig space, uh, for example, duckduckgo.com space uh, uppercase A, and this will give you some results about this website or domain. So this is the tool that we are going to use for finding out the static domain name of our VPS and this part of the tutorial ends here. So let's go and see how to install traffic on our VPS. So the traffic installation is pretty straight, straightforward. We're going to download the binary file from GitHub from the uh, original source and then we're going to extract it and run it. Let's see how that works. Here I'm using my terminal. You can use putty um, to connect over SSH, secure shell to do your VPS. And first things I'm going to install two tools. Um, one is wget and the other one is git that we are going to need to uh, go through this tutorial. After that, I'm going to this uh, website right here on, uh, with my browser and I'm going to look at the latest release. Uh, at the time of this tutorial, the latest release is version 2.2.1 and I'm going to copy the path of the um, traffic Linux MD64 version. After that, I'm going to use wget and the uh, link that I have just copied, paste it right here and download this version. 
this is how it will look after um, the software has been traffic has been downloaded then i will use the tar command to extract traffic here in the home directory of my beekeeper user and then by issuing the command dot slash traffic space dash dash help i'm going to check out if traffic runs correctly so if this is not the result make sure you have downloaded the correct version for your operating system and for your uh, processor so check that you have downloaded the amd64 if you're running an amd64 or a 64-bit processor if you're running um, a raspberry pi you might probably look for a um, uh, arm uh, version of the traffic if it's available and stuff like that so this is actually everything uh, about downloading and testing traffic good before we continue with the next part of the tutorial let's work through these steps and uh, download the latest release of traffic so i have here my uh, my terminal connected to the vps if you're on windows open putty and connect to your uh, hornet node then i have here my installation nodes that are linked in the description below and i will start with installing the needed tools so let's do that here it's the first time that i'm using this user so it's asking me for my password to proceed with the installation as i am invoking the power of root to install wget and git he will ask me for confirmation i type yes press enter and just wait all right done uh, of course here is also the link to the official traffic documentation to understand what um, traffic is all about and how it works and how to use the binary distribution and now i'm going to look for the latest release so let's open a tab go to the release page of traffic check the latest release version uh, it's still the version 2.2.1 and i'm now scrolling down to find the amd64 version for my vps so let me copy the link to this location check again here for my installation nodes and type wget and then paste the link right here and press enter to download traffic pretty quick also here um, let's compare the checksum so swha256 sum and then of the traffic archive so here the checksum is 0413 and also here let's verify the checksums let's open up this with my editor and for the md64 version the checksum 757c6 yes is correct so we are sure that we have downloaded the right version and that it has not been manipulated all right let's extract this so i'm going to copy just the first part and then pressing tab on my keyboard will autocomplete the file name so if the ver version changes in the meantime as you or as you're watching this tutorial you can do it like this so copy the first part press tab uh, on your keyboard and do autocomplete and then press enter it will be extracted really quickly you have three files here the changelog file the license and the traffic binary so let's run the traffic binary as suggested right here so traffic dot slash traffic space dash dash help press enter mm. press enter and we see that traffic runs all right that's it so far traffic is uh, extracted on the home folder of my beekeeper user and it runs so so far everything is fine let's continue with our presentation about how to set up traffic or 
also here uh, disclaimer and warnings um, i am assuming the following so that you want to run traffic as a user called traffic and in the group called traffic with user and group id 321 uh, what does it mean well we are going to create uh, a specific uh, linux user and a specific linux um, group so that our binary software will run under this user we are going to work from a non u non root user account so the beekeeper user you have seen so far that can run uh, commands using sudo and um, that we are cloning the hornet tutorials repository with the needed files so there is a repository that i have prepared with the configuration files and other um, useful files so that we don't do not have to type everything by hand and um, we are also going to see how um, this configuration files look like and uh, what uh, the configuration means of course also here for, uh, i have uh, used another guide that uh, the original source is linked also here in the presentation and below so let's see how we are going to proceed First things first, we're going to clone the um, IOTA Community Hornet Tutorials repository that contains the traffic configuration files and other files that we're going to use during this tutorial. Then we're going to copy the traffic binary to a user local bin. So this is a system-wide binary directory and give it the appropriate ownership and permissions by using uh, chown and chmod this is how it will look like afterwards we're going through these steps on my vps then we're going to execute this command here set cap that gives the traffic binary the ability to bind to privileged ports like 80 so 80 and 443 as a non-root user since usually only root can um, or software run as root can bind to these ports this is how it looks like after that we're going to set up the user and the group that will be used so sudo group add this will um, add a group with group id 321 called traffic then we're going to add a user inside the group traffic then with the home directory in slash var slash www and it will not create uh, a home directory then with the shell user bin no as bin no login so it will have no um, no other shell defined and it will be a system user with the user id 321 and the name is of this user is traffic also here i will copy paste these commands from my um, from my installation notes so it will be pretty quick and then we are going to set up the directories that we are going to use so we are going to make a directory called et under etc called traffic then traffic ECME that will contain the certificates then a var log traffic that will contain the log files that we can read to find out if there are errors or other things going on and then we're going to change uh, the owner of these folders of these directories with the following commands this is how it looks like again i will copy paste the commands from my installation notes then we're going to uh, place our traffic configuration file traffic.toml in the proper directory and give it appropriate ownership and permissions here we are going to copy it from the hornet tutorials traffic 2 folder here is the file traffic.toml and copy it to etc slash traffic and then we're going to give it the right ownership and permissions also here pretty simple copy paste in addition we are going to add a dynamic configuration file 
this configuration file is called by the traffic configuration file. Here is where we are going to set up the, um, the connection to our Hornet node and the configuration to use um, the SSL certificates for our domain. So also here I uh, prepared already a, uh, com a configuration file that we will copy to etc traffic dynamic underscore conf dot toml and also here ownership and permissions. This is how it looks like and again copy paste from my installation notes. From here on uh, another disclaimer or a warning message. The following part is uh, about using a static domain name uh, of our VPS, so it's not a registered domain name and it is only for testing purpose. Make sure to uh, use your own uh, domain name and use this if you do not have a, re a registered already a domain name and if you're just trying out this tutorial to find out how Hornet works and how to connect a Trinity to it by um, issuing a SSL certificate. Should you have registered your own domain like uh, nodes.iota.org, uh, please edit the DNS settings to point your domain name to the IP address of your VPS. Um, also here, uh, be careful that this procedure may might take up to 48 hours to propagate to the worldwide DNF, DNS servers and that the certificate will be registered only once your domain will point to the IP address of the VPS. So, for people that do not do not have a uh, domain name, let's see how to find out our static domain name on our of our VPS, and we're going to use um, dig in our terminal to find out um, the this um, static domain name. So here is the command dig space dash x space and then the remote IP address. Um, we are going to copy this um, the result of the static domain name to a text editor like um, get it or or notepad so that we can use that later on to configure traffic. So this is how it looks like. So I, here I opened a new uh, tab on my terminal. I pasted the command with my IP address of the VPS and this is the result. And here what I'm looking for is this part right here. So static.2685 yada 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 uh, until here the DE part. Here I have selected the interesting part. This is the static domain name of the VPS that I'm using. And this is the actual domain where we will issue a uh, SSL certificate for. And this is also the address that we are going to use in Trinity to connect to the Hornet node. So let, from that part, we're going to go back to Putty or the terminal, connect it to the server and start with the configuration of um, the traffic uh, toml node. All right, let's get so far. So then we will continue with this part and we will also have a quick look at this configuration file. So I'm going back to my terminal and my installation nodes. So first things first, I'm going to uh, clone the repository to my home folder. I'm going to copy uh, traffic and set the correct permissions uh, right here. Press enter in the end. We are having no errors, so it looks like everything works correctly. We're going to um, give the traffic binary the ability to bind to privileged ports. Done. We're going to set up the user. So also here, I'm copy it here, pressing enter and it's done. 
and then I'm going to set up the directories. Done. At this point, I'm going to copy the traffic TOML, the configuration file to the etc uh, traffic TOML and also give it the permission and ownership and the same for the dynamic configuration. Press enter in the end so that we also execute the latest command. Now we are going to find out the static domain name. So here I'm going to a open a new um, a new tab on my on my terminal to find out my IP address. Well, I will go back to my um, to my VPS provider where I can copy it from there because maybe I forgot it or I didn't write it down. So let here is my IP address. So we'll now issue the command dig dash x IP address press enter and here we have the static domain name. I'm going to open a text editor and paste here the static domain name. We're going to use this later on. So we have now caught up with the slides. So before we continue we're going to have a look at the next steps in the configuration and then we're going to proceed here with our setup. So what we see in the slides is that the next step is to edit our email address so that um, the certificates can be issued and also so that we can get notifications about um, the setup that we have done. So it will look like this. We're going to copy paste the command inside our VPS. This is how the configuration file looks like. I will explain it as we are doing the configuration later on. And then we're going to insert the dynamic, um, uh, sorry, the static domain name inside these lines two times here in the traffic dynamic configuration file. If you already have registered a domain name like notes.io2.org or something, uh, make sure to insert that domain name right here um, where we put the static domain name. Also here we will open a, an editor, in this case it's Nano, and we're going to change here the domain name with our static domain name once and twice right here. And then we're going to install a systemd service so that we can use traffic as a system service so that it can be uh, started automatically at boot and other functionalities. So let's have a look at this part. Let's go back to my installation nodes and my terminal. Here, be careful, I am still on my local machine. So this is my, my computer, my notebook. Let me close this tab and here I am back on my VPS as user beekeeper. So I'm going to follow the instructions here. So let's open Nano. Let's have a look at the configuration file first. So we will have here two default entry points that we define. One entry point is HTTPS and the other is HTTP. In this configuration file we have also enabled the um, dashboard API for traffic. We are not going to cover this right here in this tutorial, but it's also interesting if you want to have the traffic dashboard to have a look at what, what is going on. Here we have uh, set up the log. So we have a log level error. So every error will be, um, every information up to error will be logged to a, a file and the file path is defined here. So we're going to write the file in var log traffic traffic dot log. So here's where we are going to have a look at eventual errors. Then we have an access log. So this, um, this log is 
separated from the one above and takes note of every access to our um, to our service using traffic here is where it's going to be saved so we will have another file in varlog traffic called traffic underscore underscore access dot log and we will have a buffer of um, around 100. We're now having a look at the entry points. So one is uh, entry point web dot web with my address column 80. So as soon as um, someone tries to access my services going through uh, port 80, the standard port for web services, it will be uh, forwarded to the entry points web and the same for web secure where if someone is going to access using HTTPS, so the uh, secure um, port, uh, the, the secure configuration for uh, secure communication in the on the internet, it will be for uh, it will be using the port 443. Next up is the providers file. So you might have different providers. One could be Docker. Uh, Mesos and others and in this case we are going to use a file the file is uh, etc traffic dynamic conf dot toml so everything that we change in this file will be used as a provider to um, give the information to traffic to look for services inside of this file and provide the services to what we have set up in this file this parameter here watch through means that every time that we save this configuration file uh, traffic will reload the configuration for us automatically last but not least the certificates resolver here we are going to use let's encrypt and now here the important part for our configuration we have to change the email address so in this case i'm going to use my iota.org email address if you leave the example.com email address it will not work as let's encrypt automatically blocks um, requests with that email address here we define where where we are going to save um, the certificate information so etc traffic acme the folder that we have created beforehand will contain a file called acme.json that will have the information about our certificates here for debugging you can uncomment this line to use the staging server uh, that is used by let's encrypt to do debugging so if you are trying out new configurations make sure to uncomment this line first try out the configurations so that you do not hit uh, rate limiting and so that you can um, be sure to um, get a certificate afterwards if you're pretty sure about your configuration leave this line commented and then uh, last but not least here uh, let's encrypt has different kind of challenges how they uh, check if your system is definitely running and if it uh, should get a certificate and in this case we tell him to use the HTTP challenge and to use the entry point called web. So what we have here above the entry point called web and it will be uh, will be using the port 80 to connect to your service and verify um, if you are in need of a certificate or a, um, get a, an, an actual certificate since Let's Encrypt certificates are valid for three months at a time and it will do all of this completely automatically let's exit and save so Control x and y and then enter to save this file let's have a look at the dynamic configuration file that we have right here this file is a little more complex so we will go through it um, step by step what we are defining here are routers so these are parts of traffic that route um, the connections so as soon as someone um, 
calls my web server, my VPS and says, hey, I'm looking for hornet.example.com. This router will react and do what we define uh, here. And now let's see what we have defined. So uh, here is the router for Hornet API dash HTTPS. So this is the router that uses, uses the web secure entry point. So as soon as someone types HTTPS uh, column slash slash Hornet dot example dot com, it will be sent to uh, this configuration right here. In this case, we have a service called called Hornet API load balancer that we have also right here, Hornet API load balancer. So as soon as someone comes in, in the using the web secure entry point, it will be forwarded to this service. And this service uh, in the end is giving me access to localhost column 14265. And this is the um, the port where Hornet is listening uh, or servicing uh, all the procedures uh, to connect a Trinity um, wallet, for example. Last configuration for this uh, router is the, um, the TLS configuration. So here we are telling him for the certificate, for resolving the certificate, we are using the let's encrypt service. So this is the first part here. The next part is another router. So again, if I come in uh, at hornet.example.org and I'm using the web entry point, so without uh, SSL, so without HTTPS, so HTTP uh, hornet.example.com, it will still service uh, this uh, Hornet API load balancer that exactly is exactly and still this service right here, but it also has a middleware configured that is called Hornet scheme. So let's have a look at our middleware. This is the middleware where this is called Hornet scheme. So this is called right here above, and this is a redirect scheme. So the scheme is called HTTPS and it's permanent. So every time I come to the entry point web without using HTTPS by using HTTP, this redirect scheme right here will be called and it will forward me permanently to HTTPS. So it will, me, it will forward me automatically to my router using HTTPS and the web secure configuration. So what we have to do right here, as we have seen in the guide, we are going to delete this part and from our notepad, paste the static host name right here and also a second time right here. If you have your own domain name like nodes.iota.cafe or nodes.antonionardella.it, you can paste paste that or write it right here. Make sure to keep the rest of the file as is. Now let's close this and save this file. And so far we have actually configured traffic. All right, we're almost there. Now let's set the system D service for traffic so that we can start the, um, the traffic uh, software automatically at start and manage it a little easier. So um, also here we have a traffic.service file that was taken from the guide and we will give it permission, reload the daemon and start the traffic service. This is how it looks like in the terminal. So we're going to copy paste all the commands from the copy command to the others. And then we start traffic. And we're going to verify using uh, the journal 
if the traffic services has started correctly. And then in the end, if we are happy with the result, we enable the traffic service so that it is started at boot. This is how it looks like. And then we wait five minutes more or less until the certificates are ready. So let's do this. Back to my terminal and my installation notes. So again, here we copy, paste it. We are getting an error. It's error 429 here. And the error is we're getting rate limited too many certificates already issued for your server dot de um, as i have said at the beginning of the tutorial this is because we are using a static um, domain name from the server itself so it's using the whole farms server farms um, domain name that's your dash server.de and this um, brings uh, us might bring because sometimes it work uh, might bring this error so we are now being rate limited and it means that we can um, issue a certificate uh, or the rate limit is i think if i remember it correctly it's 5050 certificates per week so we have been not so lucky this time um, if we are lucky, um, once we open the, uh, the, the static domain name in our browser, it switches automatically to HTTPS and it will show this error message right here. This means that the API is responding correctly. Simply we did not uh, ask it the right questions to get a correct answer. And also here we can see that the connection is secure and that the certificate is valid. So um, I suggest at this point to use, um, to either use a fully qualified domain name that you register from uh, your preferred registrar or um, to try again in one, in a couple of days, maybe after two days, the, 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 the rate limit um, expires and you can register uh, your certificate uh, certificate again troubleshooting so exactly I was uh, pointing to this error since uh, it came up while writing this tutorial so here you can see that the connection is still not private and that that the certificate authority is not valid and this is what I have done so I have verified my uh, traffic log I have given it a look and I've seen exactly the same error as I have right now as I'm going working through the tutorial myself. So here is the uh, the error itself that we are going we are rate limited, and yeah and yeah here we are fifty five zero per week. So there is nothing we can do uh, besides waiting or trying again or as I said registering your own your own domain. What should we do if everything works fine? So what can we do? How can we set up Trinity if uh, the procedure of the certificate runs fine because we have our own, uh, uh, our own domain or because we have been lucky? Well, um, under the Trinity settings and nodes, you first disable the automatic node management, then other options appear, then um, we click on add nodes. This will give us the possibility to paste uh, the, mm, the, the static domain name right here or your um, registered domain name, HTTPS, column slash slash and the domain name. By clicking add nodes, it will be added here at the bottom 
and it will give you a confirmation that it has been successfully added. The next step is to disable the auto select primary node option. And here you click here and then the list appears and you look for your domain name. After clicking it, you verify the, uh, the settings and click on save. Also here, it will confirm that the node has uh, changed successfully and it will give you a notice for this uh, node, for example, that the remote proof of work is not supported. And then I, of course, tried to send um, a transaction and it worked perfectly for my tutorial. So I can confirm that this setup works for our purposes. All right, so what's next? Well, once you have a valid certificate, you can continue enjoying your Hornet node and experimenting with it, uh, trying out some client libraries or software that you have built yourself or use the node to uh, connect with your Trinity or give it to your friends for them to use your node. A good idea would be to register a wildcard domain name. So you could have, let's say, endless third level domains if that fits your budget to also add dashboards um, to traffic. So you could load the traffic dashboard, the Hornet dashboard um, by selecting or by choosing or adding the services to traffic itself. Um, next up, join the IOTA Discord at https colum slash slash discord.iota.org. And of course, as a node operator, it's very good to know more about uh, VPS security. As I have said in another video, it's imperative. So please um, check out the link and also the other links below to learn more about um, about how to operate a node and what it means and how to uh, make it securely and safely. All right, thank you very much for following me through this uh, tutorial. It was a real pleasure for me. Um, and come uh, to Discord and uh, get more support or ask for more information there. So have a great one and catch you next time. Bye.